Welcome to another week, round number seven. We give you plenty of rugby league winners and other sports winners. No need to thank me. It's okay. Thank it. Uh, my, my, listen, my gift is your reward. Hello, Joel Kane. I, I gather you watch the Masters and just yes. Scotty Scheffler win by three or more. Yeah, never Ludwig. in doubt. I like him, Scotty Scheffler. Yeah? I like him. Bit of a dot ball, isn't he? No, I just, I, I, quite a humble character. Mm. I, I, a lot of people are sort of panning him, but I like him. Top ball. I, can I just jump straight in? How's the lighting in here today? I haven't even noticed. I'm not looking. I ha, just, hasn't even noticed. That, that's a good thing. I, I haven't looked. I just okay. I let it go. I've just, you know, I've shaken that off. Because I have it on good authority. Hugo behind the scenes here was breaking all sorts of uh, work safe yeah. guidelines. He was on a chair, almost broke a leg just to get it sorted. So I'm glad that you haven't noticed it, which means it's probably spot on. I haven't looked, to be honest, because I've, okay. I've, I've become a fat pig over the last few months. <laughs> and I'm quite disgusted with myself. So I don't even look at the monitor. You know, I had a big pastry this morning because I was getting a coffee and Ooh. I just grabbed a raisin scroll. So I don't feel good about myself today. <laughs> a raisin my, scroll. My, it's a bit of comfort food. My favourite, my favourite part of the Masters, and it's going to, is Ludwig because you <laughs> absolutely <laughs> hammered him last week. Who's Ludwig? Eh? I was, and I was getting around Ludwig. It's just a, it, it's obviously not a name you hear that much of. You were that close to the Quinella, weren't you? I got the Quinella. Oh, you got the Quinella. I got a Quinella. Oh, a Quinella. Yeah, well, I would said I have multi. It I helps. You had Will Zalatoris, didn't it, you? Yeah, he finished ninth. It helps really when right. you throw a rather large net out, Shug. I'm, I'm told there was 10 or 11 Quinellas had. Yeah, but five five runners out of 89 players. Okay. 20 combos, five times four. I mean, I mean, imagine a Melbourne Cup four times over. That's basically, you've got a Ooh. field of four Melbourne Cups, and I've, I've whittled it down I to think five. It's a, it's a good strategy. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, uh, that's the end of the self-indulgence from me, at least for now. Um, <laughs> thank you again for watching on Fox League on Thursday night. Did we tip and winners on the Fox League show? I hope we did. Um, this, this feels like a bit of a loaded question. I don't know. I actually don't know. I can't remember. See, see, because we're just we we we're, we're just workhorses here for sports bet. I just forget what we put on the regular podcast for the real mm. people. As you sort of warned us, don't 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 forget about don't the, forget the little the people, people that were there from the start. That's right. Yep. And what we tip for uh, the Fox League. I mean, they're the same tips, but some because the Fox League show is uh, uh, smaller, uh, mm. less time. I'm not sure how many of those tips transfer over. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm doing what is called dribbling. Um, <laughs> shout out. Now, I bumped into a couple of weeks ago, ironically on a Wednesday, drove home from here, the studio, was in my little neck of the woods and someone yells out my name. Doesn't happen that often. And I turn around and I think, I know that bloke. And he, he goes, this is what he said, Sean. You'll be impressed with this. Wednesday, 6 p.m. I never miss you blokes. And I've gone, Wednesday, six, Wednesday mm. 6 p.m.? I said, are you talking about the radio show? I used to have a radio show like six or seven years ago at 6 p.m. He goes, no, 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 on KO. And I've gone, oh, you mean get them on side? He goes, yes, yes. How, how dare you? Go to radio before. No, 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 but it go. was the specific of 6 p.m. Yes. Mm. So that must be his, his ritual. Uh, that is his ritual, which I love because obviously we, I don't know when they put us up, but it's not 6 p.m. It's a bit earlier than that. That's it's like basically. you getting your raisin, uh, what was it, croissant? In you haven't referenced the man. Ritual. I'm about to. Yes. I'm about to. And I'm thinking, I know this bloke. I know this bloke. And I said, I know you. I know you from somewhere. Like, I now had the confidence to know. I didn't know him personally. Yep. But I knew him. And it hit me. He was and is from home and away. Yes. And uh. he says, my name's Jimmy. That's him. That's him. Jimmy Stewart. Oh. Or James Stewart, as I think is his uh, acting or his official name. But he introduced himself as Jimmy. That's Jake from Pack to the Rafters. Is it That's really? Is. Yeah. I was never a Pack to the Rafters guy. No I knocker. I just never, yeah. never, never got my hooks in to that one. More of a home and away man. Uh, well, I just oh, early I love days home rafters. and away. Early Pack days home and yeah, away. Yeah, great show. Yeah, He's yeah. been in it for, must have, he must have been in and out because I remember him from 20 years ago. Pack to the Patricks was one of the great shows, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> it was just a great show. So a big shout out to Jimmy Stewart. And I asked him, I said, who do you, I said, I said, who do you follow, Sean or Joel? And he goes, I can tell Sean has some sort of system, but I feel like Joel has a better feel. Ooh. He said that. And, and he's, but then he's gone, 
Oh, but I follow you sometimes. I said, it, uh, <laughs> Jimmy, I, I promise you, I am not offended. He might, he might have clipped me on the way through, but as long as he clicked no, he didn't, through, then he didn't clip. I'm okay he with clip, that, he you was know? very positive. He said, I feel like uh, Joel has a better feel, but you know, you had the better results. That's, that was how I... Oh, I think you've, you've taken a bit of license there to make me feel... Well, better. he was That's very okay. positive about both of you. Would he be our biggest name? Well, this is the question. Now, well, James Bracey was always our uh, early, oh, yeah. early adopter. Mm. So uh, I'd put... That's a, I've got to put a home and away star ahead of Jimmy. I love another Jimmy, James Bracey, but I'm putting a home and away star. Because of the niche factor, the fact that it's not sport, I'm putting mm. James Stewart as top seed, but I think we can top it, or at least, you know what, Joel, I don't even want to top it. That's the level of celebrity hey, I'm James after. James Magnuson, he might be, once this Ridley Scott doco comes out, yeah. what we think, we've already got three to start with. Mm. We need to implement into this show a short video of our man Jimmy giving his best of the week. And if he wins, he stays in the seat. Love it. Otherwise, he hands the reins I to like it. James Bracey. If Brace yes. wins, he stays in the seat. Otherwise, he hands but the reins to I, the missile. I think, can you reach out if you're... Uh, I, I just think we have this little niche audience of people, you know, actors or, 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 or whatever you're kind gonna, of You're not going to ask them to email in to get oh, no, them on uh, sportsbet.com.au, no, which he's bursting at the same. To say, get them on site at sportsbet.com.au. I'm just saying, let us know. What, look at me, I'm a celebrity. I listen to yeah. you. You know, yeah. no one's doing that. I did that once on radio. In the, in the, oh, in, you are. <laughs> it was like six o'clock. I've just done it as a gag. First call was Steve Renoff. Oh, yeah, it was outstanding. I can't remember Pearl. who the others were because I think I had re- uh, the Pearl on the phone for about five minutes. But what I'm saying is, let us know because you know you bump into us at some stage, or let us because that that is the perfect level. I don't need Russell Crowe or Hugh Jackman. I need these nice. are our people. Yeah, these nice. are our okay, people. Just on to our people, the Pearl. Every time this fixture rolls around, which we'll get to Canberra and the Broncos, I think. How did they not meet in a grand final? Yes. And who was the better team in the early 90s? Have you got a firm view on early that? Early 90s Canberra? Yes. Late 90s Brisbane. Well, I'd put the Brisbane 98 team ahead of all of them. Yes, but you could only have played each other that 92, 93 Broncos, 94 Canberra. Who was the Canberra. superior team? I think Canberra. I think whenever they seem to meet... On equal footing, therefore no injuries. Canberra, or was it just murdered? Canberra seemed to win more than Brisbane. Uh, well, '93 was the year. <laughs> Ricky Stewart, you can imagine this. Ricky Stewart, they've carved up Parramatta, right? And he's done his knee, so he's he's just hating it. And then he's gone, and to do it against you, bloody hopeless buggers. <laughs> did he say that? <laughs> Parramatta. I, get, I, get, I can't believe I did it against I you, bloody hopeless. I was going to say, I bet he took it well. <laughs> that was like a week before the finals. Do you oh, remember? No. Who the replace? This is a this is a question only for forty Sounds five very somethings. Very niche. You remember who the oh, replacement was? It, I, it, I, it's I, not Steve Stone. I think he might have been the second week. Trevor Shadell. Trevor Shadell. Wow, yeah, yeah. that's well. <laughs> Don't ever challenge one of the greatest. I knew he could get it. Why do you think I asked? I knew he could get it. Anyway, uh, this has gone right off track. But anyway, celebrity, faux celebrity. Let us know. We got some plans about what to do with people of our ilk. You know, of a real low level of... Your ilk. Well... Our <laughs> ilk. No, I think you... Yeah. Or who'd be... I think you'd get more recognised than me. Uh, and I think this bloke's starting to get recognised. I know it because it's starting to get to his head. <laughs> uh, let's get to some of the uh, good and bad of last week. Uh, we say this with pain, but someone is in a real drought at the moment. <laughs> Mr. 12 in a row. Oh, you're going to mention that, are you? Okay. Yeah. Well, that that's was, good. That, that was in the, the, when the when the days were good, they were very good. Right now, we're in the Mojave Desert. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give the Dolphins a huge chance in this game. It's still a big, big, I say still, because it's brand new, but it's a big rivalry. And I think Wayne Bennett will have the, the Finns up for it. Full time at Suncorp Stadium, Brisbane, 28. Have defeated the Dolphins 14. We we had about three or four minutes there where we were fixing for one of the worst backdoor covers of all time. They gave you a hope that you did not deserve. Nowhere near would it have been top 10 backdoor covers. Oh, 28 4, and you were getting beaten up. Let's just let's recap some of the game. Oh, here's the excuse. Hermiso goes off after 20 minutes. You take the best player off after 20 minutes. That doesn't help, Shul. That'd be well, fair. To, to your defence, right, <laughs> and, and you have choked since going on to the main body. That's right. 0-3. Yes, but 
you did have Flegler in the side at the time of your tip. I'll give you that. Yeah. And there were some lucky tries for the Broncos, which there we'll were talk some about lucky tries. in the big and shows. It's not, but I, I say this. No lucky tries. I, I, and I say this is actually being serious for a moment. If you And you should do this after every bet. Revisit it on the Monday, yep. regardless of the result, and ask yourself, would you have had that bet again? I, the last three, I still get to yes. You're t- because you're I a still get, bloke. I still get to yes. And of course, I no, would some, say that. Being sometimes, it's not meant, sometimes it's not meant to be. Uh, no, sometimes it is not meant to be. I'm, uh, I'm trying to finish on a slight positive, um, and we're not rubbing it in. But John. how do we fix it though? How do we fix? Well, this I don't thing? know because we keep getting we yeah. keep we keep getting our end of the bargain up as again we did this week. Sharks just a cruise okay. by South. Full time Sharks thirty four, Rabbitohs twenty two. Uh, Tigers Dragons on with you, Sean. I don't see many points in this game, so I've gone the under forty two and a half at Campbelltown. Full time here. It's the Dragons 24, the Tigers 12. Uh, that back- Cronulla one you always had in hand, but it was always. That was backdoorish. Ish. Ish. Which one? Pictures. Ish. Uh, exactly my Which point. Yeah. Well, mine. No, his. No, your, yours was airborne. Uh, yeah, mine was never in doubt, but not. Uh, six out of seven, anyway. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's all the punters one, care about. Five and one best bets. We're having a debate the first week. Apparently, I had a best bet, but it was $2.55, and I wasn't even on air. No, I'm, I'm going to. No, I'm not giving you that one. That's that's fair. We'll, so we'll, I'm we'll, five and you one. You had the buy. You had He's the buy week one. Six and one. Come on. I'm four and three. Come on. I just. Out. I know the true greatness you have as a tipster, and I just need the big channel to see it. It's Wait. in there somewhere. Well, I'm telling you, yeah, tune right. in, that's tune right. in Thursday night this week. He's a great club player. Yep. But is he an Origin player? That's right. <laughs> that's we don't right. know yet. That's right. We that might be know. a little bit of Zach Lomax about me, maybe. Uh, now we don't have go. to play. We don't have to play this, uh, but it's on the rundown. I've already <laughs> had my. I've already had my little sort of uh, fun with it, but you know, I, I've got to stick with the rundown. They've only scored one try between them this year, but 475, a Cobbo Walsh anytime double. In the wide headgear, the flash of Reese Walsh, the big dive. He didn't want to have anything to do with it. Brisbane do though, and so would Cobbo with his first try of the year. Right, it says here, Dan So Right with Flair Bet. I thought it was for Scotty Scheffler winning by three shots, but I forgot something. I didn't make that my yeah. Flair. And here's what else I forgot. I forgot I had Reese Walsh as the second part of that double. I thought it was Katoni Staggs. Yeah. So on Friday, I backed Staggs. Cobbo. And Cobbo. And that's why when I started seeing fire group, emojis, right? yeah. you know my thing about you don't jinx it. So I've cost myself a lot of money. I'd forgotten it was Walsh Cobbo. I, for whatever reason, thought it was Stags Cobbo. We should have known better too because you don't often bring it out, but there was a real inflection, 475. <laughs> and as soon as you said that, I thought, oh, geez, he's confident, this bloke. Good, yeah. Well played, Daniel. Well, because I, I tell you what, I backed it and it was 575. And I thought, geez, those odds have changed. Oh, well, lucky me. <laughs> uh, anyway, we, we, we live and learn. Um, Topics we could just get to very quickly, please. Um, should God, we're bringing out the chestnuts here. Should Game <laughs> One of State of Origin be played in Melbourne? Um, why are we having this debate, Joel? I don't know, but I'll, while we have it, so if we do play the neutral venue, do you believe it should be the last game? No, can't be because it affects the crowd in case it's dead rubber. State governments demand, and they made that clear a while ago. One of them did, and they all cottoned on. You can't have a dead rubber. Needs to be a live game. Needs to be a live yeah. game. Um, I, don't, I don't need it outside of New South Wales or Queensland, personally. I don't. I don't need it. But then again, I'm not going to. I'm not going to die on some hill that says it has to be either. I, I think. I think it. shopping it around every couple of years, three years maybe is okay. So you, you take it. it in turns. Yeah. You host two. Yep. Like you that. host two. Shop it around. Yep. I don't like hate it. it. Look, I don't hate being uh, doing one. It, it does provide a neutral series, one there, one here, one somewhere else. I don't hate that, and it does make too much money. These state governments are paying ten million dollars or something for them. Um, plus, some of us get the nice hospitality of premiers like the wonderful Peter Malinowskis, the premier of South Australia. So, <laughs> while you're in the raw, let's not let's not uh, uh, let's save that topic for when. You know, we get yeah, closer to Melbourne. Joey Manu, does he return to the NRL? Uh, Most have. Of course he does. He's it's, young it's, enough. It, it's, a question of, it's a question of when, not if for me. Have they all returned? Uh, Wendell did. 
Did Matty Rogers return after yes, rugby? Yes, he played he for did. Gold Coast. Yeah. Played pretty well. Gold uh, Coast 5-8. Roger did. Benji did. Takiri did. He's coming back. Did. They all, the How old is he? He's coming 25? back. 25? Bit older, I reckon. Bit older? 27. 20, 20, okay. 27, yeah. 26 or 27. He's got plenty left. He's going to cop 1.6. Mm. And I, I was talking to Roger Tuovasashek's dad, Johnny. If you watch him play, he's exactly like him. Good Bruce. And he was hoping... Yeah, good Bruce. He was hoping uh, Roger went to Japan. Good touch player, wasn't he, Johnny? Still. Yeah. Still. You watch him, you'd go, okay, that's Roger's dad. But they can just cruise for 16 games a year for 1.6. I think the tax gets paid. How, how much did his contract go up by off the back of last week, do you think? On the open market, probably at least 100000 Yeah, okay. In the NRL. Yep. They are great numbers, what he did. Does, how many, does it win you a comp the way he played last week? I mean, I'm, I'm asking, I'm asking, well, I'm yes, not saying... I'll tell you what it does. I'll tell you what it does. So we've spoken about on this show about the rolling boulder of the back five. Dylan Edwards, what he was doing, he was taking the first carry, Joey Manu, and then he was taking that play four, yes. and that's why the likes of Brandon Smith and all these players yeah, were finding form. So it has a big impact on what your forwards are doing. I just heard questions going, yeah, but there was no creativity. If I'm getting 300 metres out of a bloke, I don't care. Doesn't really like matter. creativity can come somewhere the, else. The one thing I don't think he could do that for a whole season without getting absolutely bashed up and causing mischief to himself. So that would be the only thing. Hybrid but it was Connor hybrid. Watson goes there this week. Be interesting to see. I'm with you, Shook. Yeah. The Zach Lomax story will well, <laughs> it's not going to die down. I don't think he signed at Parramatta, so that part of the deal is done. Done. I'm with you, Joel. I don't think he sees out the year at the Dragons. I'm perplexed by the whole thing. He had another barnstormer. I, on, on Sunday, a standout. I, I don't get it. I, I, there's something up there. I don't know if he's not getting enough respect at the Dragons. I don't know. Look, you don't know sometimes with these things that promises are made and then not kept. They may have promised him fullback two years ago. Well, that was the mail. Right. So things change, but he may be hurt by it. I don't know. Well, the fact that it was the money that he signed on would... Uh, tell me that he was definitely told that he'd be playing fullback at some yep. point. Yes. And then, you know, things happen and a fair bit of water's gone under the bridge since then. Um, but he's yeah. probably landed on his true value now. Whether he's playing fullback, wing, whatever, wing's probably on the upper end. But my, my thing for this is, so uh, we what agree... Is, sorry, what is the number for... I think it's uh, 675 right. on average, isn't it? Okay. Versus 800. Yeah. Now, when you really think about it, if you're Zach Lomax, you might go, okay, if they see me as a winger... In two years' time, I'm getting nowhere near the 800. So if I take 675, which is on the table now, for an additional two years, mm. there's a case to say it's a fair play. Yeah, I suspect this is not about money; it's about respect. There's something there that we're. Oh, I don't disagree aware. with that. Right, let's get to the game, shall we? We've gibbered long enough. Uh, Roosters versus Melbourne is our first. Gee, it's a good Thursday night game. And the bookies, i.e., sports bet, can't really separate them as we've got it. Melbourne. So slight favourites, you might as well say it's a toss of the coin job. Tedesco is back. Roosters looked great last week. Um, Melbourne. Nelson is in. I don't know how many minutes they're going to get out of him, but he's in for Tui Kamakamitha. They escaped last week against the Dogs. Uh, as we look here at images of a previous Storm Roosters game, um, Allianz is the venue. To rematch of the finals, which I gather this is what we're looking at here. Obviously, it was won basically on the last play. Will Warbrick uh, with the try. Uh, Joel, I'm pretty confident about Melbourne here uh, in this game. But then again, they were probably outplayed last week by Canterbury. So, I don't know. Roosters at least returned to form against Newcastle. I'm not sure how to read that form. I think the price is bang on. It's a complete flip of the coin. Allianz Stadium, they disappointed last time there taking on the Panthers, mm. maybe ambushed a little bit there. I like the fact that he's kept Connor Watson. I, I don't believe that the walker Keery thing works. Mm. So whether you play Connor Watson there, whether you play Joey Manu there, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe Tedesco even there. But um, it's a big, big game. And, and one thing I know for sure is James Tedesco was in the box with Coach Robinson last week, watching on Joey Manu absolutely killing it. He's fresh. Mm. Teddy's coming out with a... He's coming out with 300 metres himself. Statement. Statement mate. game. The Statement. two fullbacks, Pappenhaus and Tedesco, it's going to be a cracker. Under 38 and a half for those that take, that's the favourite. Under yeah. 38 and a half. The margins for Melbourne, Sean, this year, 8-4, lost by two, and then 
one by two, one by two. Mm. So they can't put teams away. No, they can't. And the two out is a big one because I'm, I'm with you. I'm not really sure how many minutes they're going to get out of Nelson. I think the question mark about him was he probably didn't come back um, in good enough shape. So there's another question mark about minutes yeah. potentially as well. So two is a, a huge out, but. I'm still a little bit put off by the Roosters outs. So they're still missing probably four or five. And I'm not saying they make huge differences to what the betting would be, but there's something there. But the fact that at, at Allianz, you know I'm big for a, you know, a fair bit of home advantage, and it's, it is big. I've got the Roosters in front. What scared me a little bit was there was a, a, a move to the Storm yesterday, a few hours after teams were named. So I'm not sure if there's potentially other injuries for the Chooks. So it's a bit of a watch, but... If they run out as named, I think I want to be with the Chooks just at the at the dollar ninety ish or, or, or whatever it is. Well, Melbourne have won eight of the last nine against the Roosters, so they've got the previous head-to-head matchup uh, advantage. Joel, oh look, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, you know what? I'll go. I'll go the Storm. Mm. Pappenhausen hasn't played Roosters for more than three years. I, I just present you the first. Okay. Woo. Sorry to cut Woo! you off. There. No, no, that's hasn't okay. Played for three years. Hasn't played the Roosters for more than three years. Right. Um, I think the fullbacks are going to have a cracker. Same game, multi. Pap, Teddy, both to score in a thriller. No idea who's going to win the match. No idea. Yeah, that's you know it's funny. I had the same attitude with a couple of games coming up, where I ha- I really can't read the game, so I just go a try score market. Yeah. That's just the easiest way. Look for some value there. Dragons versus Warriors is our 6 o'clock Friday game from Wynn Stadium. The last time the Dragons were at Wynn, they beat Manly. Lomax goes to the centres. Uh, Bird is out, so Christian Tuipolotto comes onto the wing. Warriors are a funny team. I mean, they escaped last week, but they still got a draw. Three wins, two losses, and a draw. It seems like they're playing so much better than that, but their record's not that great. It's only their third away game this year. Uh... It's been four games since they've lost. I think they're significantly better than the Dragons, and the odds aren't mm. that far apart. Dollar forty-four Warriors to me seems like pretty good value. I agree, they're significantly uh, better. But how big do you get that number? And I, I, I just touched on home advantage, and um, you this, do love win, don't you? This would be part of my um, system that Jake from Pack the Rafters, uh, yeah. Jimmy said, uh, was speaking to you about. Yeah, I, I still think it's underrated. I still think the, the your rank and file person having a bet might just look at this and go, well, geez, the Warriors are, subt- are significantly better than the Dragons. They should win. And I'm saying they, they should be favourites, which means they probably should win. But how far do you get this if we play it on the moon, Shug? Mm. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's double figures. That's a big gap in today's footy. And I love Wynn Stadium. And the only person or group of people that like uh, Wynn Stadium better than me is the Dragons. They've covered four from the last five when they've been outsiders. It just ticks a lot of boxes, and it's a, that key number, six and a half. Yeah. I think this is a close game. Well, Jake from Pack to the Rafters might be following your numbers. Justin from home and away, jump on the field train, brother. <laughs> um, I just The Warriors killed him down there last time. Yeah. The right edge, it was Dallin with Tennis Lesnick, four tries I think you mm. scored. Through the middle, there's questions. Ben Hunt's a target. Yeah. Ben Hunt and Chad Townsend at their ages now. They are becoming a target. Adam Fadua Blake will target there. Jackson Ford's a big target there. I tell you, he's got a hot hand. And I think he suits that slick deck. Our man Sloan for the top try scorer. Oh, yes. He yeah. scored five games in a row at Wynn Stadium, a total of six. Ooh, nice stat. Nice um, stat. But I, I just, I know it's six and a half tricky number. Yeah. But um, Justin from home and away, <laughs> we're on the Warriors to cover. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, the counter to the that right edge defence of the Dragons is the Warriors love their right edge attack as well. They they do over index that way. Yeah. Um, it's just it's a nice little number. Over index. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that put that on the board, Gibbo. Yeah. Over index. That's a new <laughs> word we've been. <heard>. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> he is. He. I thought that'd be your best bet. Plus six and a half at Wynn Stadium. Oh, it must have been on the short list. You two hammered me last week for my Melbourne Storm have never lost in April stat for six oh, years. Yeah. That's, yeah. Not a, that's not a stat. Hang that, on, that, you. That, that's hang on. The Dragons have covered when they're the underdog in four of their last five at Wynn. Yeah, because, We're starting to get very new. Because what it tells me yes, is the market... Right. The, the market is not is, respecting the home ground. Not respecting the home ground advantage yeah. enough. You set the market. Coinc- that's on you. Coincidentally, the one game out of those five was the Warriors where they lapped them. Yeah. So there's the there's the caveat. But I think... Is that what scared you off? No, it's just putting... When I, when you need to get bat on ball, Shug, yeah. <laughs> you're out from you three. You differently, aren't you? 
Scared, well, scared him off. Yeah. Watch your, give us your flair, please, Sean. You don't, you don't put your faith in bad teams. And I've still got the Dragons probably lumped in that category. The flair, now this is flairy. Dragons 13 Woo! plus. Been doing this. Oh. Been doing this since the, um, <laughs> since this show began. When you're with a dog, particularly a home dog, things can happen with a big crowd behind you. 13 plus at a tick under eight dollars. Mate, you backing home sides underdogs 13 plus is it's old enough to shave. <laughs> <laughs> that's that one your, of the, is that your skim latte? That's yeah, his whatever. That's yeah. one of the best lines. Shout that's out to Kenty for that yeah, one. Yeah, Kenty come up with that. that is is it? Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's quite the bit there from Sean. Uh, we get to Darwin. Parramatta versus Dolphins is our 8 o'clock game. Uh, 7.30 Darwin time. 32 degrees and humid will be the mm. weather. 80% humidity. Ugh. Told at that time. Uh thirty-eight eels as we go to air here. Lost their last two in Darwin, Parramatta, to North Queensland. They were flogged a couple of years ago and Brisbane last year. Dolphins are a funny team. They've got six of their best players missing. Let me read this list for you, John. Gilbert, Tabio Ifido, Tom Flegler, Herbie Farnworth, Felice Gulfusi and Connolly Lemuelu. That's six of the 17 Best players not available for the Dolphins. Trey Fuller goes to fullback. I, I think this is almost disrespectful, this line to Parramatta, that it's only eight and a half. I know Moses is not there. Yep. Parramatta's miles better than this Dolphins. Team, I, I, I do they? agree, yeah. Well, this was so close to being my best bet. So close. Just that tricky nine and a half or eight and a half number. Mm -hmm. Last year they played them, and Styles make fights. Parramatta walked through them. 42 nil half time. But they had six players who ran for more than 150 metres. They were just charging through them. Yeah. The only player who put a dent in them was the fullback. <laughs> now they've got glass half coming in there at fullback. Um, <laughs> I just what? <laughs> what? What's that? Uh, or the meat tray? Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I just. I have to be on Parramatta. If Moses were playing, I'd be 20-plus job. Yeah. If Moses was playing, what, what's the line, though, if, if Mitch is running out here, do you think? 15 and a half. 13 and a half. Yeah. It, it, it's tricky. And I'm, I am put off by all those outs for the Finns. But, again, I'm also put off with getting around, giving away so many points without your playmaker. And I know they put on 27 points against the Cowboys, but they, they leak like a sieve so far this yeah. year. And we'll add into last year as well. And the first half could have been a, a very different story if a few things had went the Cowboys' way. Again, um, the result always isn't um, you know what you look at. Leaning just the way of the Finns. Okay, what about the, the Finns. what about the little Finns. narrative... Oh, narrative. I mean, we're just we're pulling out all the toys. Hey, what about today? the narrative of Brad Arthur not wanting the assistance of Wayne Bennett? Is oh, there that, a little, is, that is a narrative. And, and, and the chat around Wayne Bennett uh, being connected to Parramatta. There'll be extra inspiration here. That is you a narrative. Just pointed to a plot. You meant to point at the teams, but you yeah. pointed at the fullback Gutherson. How do you feel about Clint Gutherson's seventy-five percent chance? From 38 metres out, six in from touch. Did you see that horrific shot at goal he had? He shanked it. I did. I did say 75%. You I, did say 70 That's what I said. Oh, okay. What did I say? I thought you said 78. Well, 75. Yeah. <laughs> because the Triple M kick predictor said 21 and you laughed at it. Yeah. Have you got Are you shares? now willing to concede? Have you got shares in this kick predictor? Maybe. You put okay. a lot of faith in it. You tell Gutho, right, he's hooking a lot. His misses, if you plot your misses, they are hooking mostly. Yeah. He's got to go a bit more square. He's too narrow to He's the ball. He's too front on, isn't he? Yes. He's too front on. And that, even is, I that is even conducive I to hooking the ball. I just you to concede that if he had 10 shots from 38 out, six in from touch, which he says... He kicked seven. No, he would again. He would. Why do you have to be stubborn? He just gave me the evidence last week. He's not that good a goal Yeah, but it's out. like going to a driving range. Like, if you go to a driving range and you just bash 50 down You'll the middle... You'll get his eye in you do. a couple in. You do. 38 out, six in from touch. But the touch. option is there. Oh. If he wants to do it for charity... We'll get behind him. Well, he said, Sean, you know. You wait till I square him up. promises. Uh, woo! woo! Um, oh, yes, I think there'll be a lot of tries in this game. I have no faith in the Dolphins' defence. I mean, the, the three wins they've had, have you seen? Who do they beat? They beat the Titans, the Dragons. Or do the Dragons beat them? Flog the Dragons, flog, flog the, dragons. the Gold Coast, beat the Tigers. That's what I call fool's goal. Was it, yeah. it was 6-4 at half-time against the Broncos last week. Oh. And that, with, 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 with half of that half without... 
their absolute best player. Yeah, but they're also I'm, got a heap in. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Play a bit, lots of tries. Simonson and Gutherson and Jack Bostock. On the feed, I actually put the wrong bet in. So just there, I've got two virtually the same. Um, Simonson, is there a tipping option for the feed? So when I tip people into winners, you know, like mm. a Vegas, you know, when a Vegas dealer deals your blackjack. Oh, you can tip a bit back to you. I think, you know, I, th I just think that should be available. I, th I would have thought we're paying you enough, as it stands. I am just think the people would want to show their gratitude. When I tip him, Scotty Shetler to win the Masters by three or more, and isn't it's seven dollars. Isn't a week? Isn't a week a long time in feed punting? Oh yeah. Because you were more rattled than me. Yes, I was. A week ago. Yes, I was. I've had, <laughs> I had so a again. decent week. I, I had a the second two weeks ago, yeah. an okay week, probably broke even, and I felt that that was like, oh, I've settled. Okay. Okay. Bat on ball. Simonson, Gutherson, Boy, Boss Doctor combined for four plus tries nice. is a, I think, a nice seven dollars. I do think there might be a lot of tries in that game, even with a greasy ball. Uh, speaking of greasy footballs, Penrith West's Tigers last year played in the slop in Bathurst. It was a low scorer. I think the weather forecast is much better here. Carrington Park, Panthers a dollar eighteen. Still no Nathan Cleary. Scott Sorensen's back. Tigers look totally different to last year. Uh, last week and last year, there's I think like seven players in this game are still there at the club. Uh, Luke Brooks and Brandon Wakem were there last year in Bathurst, so forget that. But Lockie Galvin is back. That's one we can't forget for this game. Brent Naden into the centres. John Bateman returns and the young Fainus, Latu and Samuela return as well. So this is a much better West Tigers team than was presented last week and it would want to be because that was a shocking game. Um, Penrith, though, warm, warm favourites, Joel. Uh, 13 and a half start. Yeah, well, even the premiership run for the Panthers, they've only won three of the last five against the West Tigers. They won the last instalment. Yeah, it was in driving rain. But even the year before, which was similar circumstances, Sean O'Sullivan came in, there was no Cleary, and they just snuck home the Panthers. There's enough reasons to get around the Tigers. A different venue being Bathurst. Benji was filthy about uh, their performance last week. Yep. You've got a few ex-Panthers in Staines, Naden, and uh, Appy, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I just They're off the buy. Sometimes that can throw you out a little bit, the Penrith Panthers. So there's enough reasons to get around the Tigers at the start. Galvin back in. Galvin back, Galvin in. back in is a huge upgrade, albeit for a, for a young kid having played, what, two or three games. Fourth game. Fourth game. But, but I mean, you've got to... Yeah. Yes. You've got to tell it for how it is. It's, yep. a, it's a big upgrade. So that's a tick. And I know we all get a bit... Um, lost in the hole. It's next man up at Penrith, and their record is uh, is pretty good without Cleary. It's still a it's still a huge difference to what the betting would be, and I can't get it near thirteen and a half. Sugar, I'm with you. Yeah, it's a lot on the Tiggy train. It's a lot of respect you're paying the Tigers. Uh, Penrith's changed their style a bit. They're the number one offload team in the comp now. Have you noticed that? They're no, not as just bash it up the middle, quick play the balls. Number one offload team. So they've brought a bit of that about them. And 11 tries now on their right side. Still only two on their left. So they really are favouring that right. River. Um, I thought, Joel, I thought, honestly, if they said, can you predict Joel's flair for this game, I would have said this is a perfect Tigers to score zero. But you've gone completely the other way here. Yeah, I just love the way he's burrowing down. And I, I think he's owned already the New South Wales jersey. Um, happy Coruscant. Happy Coruscant against the old firm. And I, I do believe the way to, uh, to score against the Panthers is very direct. They're so good at shifting. Yeah. So if you play those block plays out the back, they just travel so up. easily. Yeah, yeah, you've got to hit that lead man. You've got a challenge from dummy half. There's been a number of tries scored against the Panthers from dummy half. Happy. What about that pass he threw, Utoy Kamasa? Oh. That, 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 that exact that's play my, could happen again. I think that's my favourite bit of rugby. That is the thing that gets me is excited. You can have the Xavier Coates high-flying, and that, they're wonderful. When Appy does that, oh. and he's looking... He's looking at the athletic track yep. and throwing a pass. Oh, yep. the word that we love in rugby league. Yep. Deception. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yep. That's it. Uh, Gold Coast versus <laughs> he likes Manly. That, he? <laughs> wow. Gold Coast versus Manly. Laugh at your own jokes, Dave. No, I thought that would have got him off the bit. <laughs> no, no. It's fine. Gold Coast Manly. Gold Coast still winless. <laughs> I Brutally unlucky last week. Brutally unlucky. Uh, but still conceding 29 points a game. They've conceded... 20 in 10 straight. Well done. Uh, Manly have lost their last two against the Gold Coast. Funny record against them. No LIA, but Garrick and Saab are in. I think this is a big Saab day coming up. 
Um, first game since Vegas. Nine and a half is the start here. Sean, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, well, again, my profile, home underdogs. It ticks that box, but it's very, very scary. I, I just look at the last fortnight for Manly. We were, I think we were all pretty keen on them at home two weeks ago against Penrith. Up for that one, got the victory. Then had to go to New Zealand. I think they were... The scoreline probably flattered them in the first half. They scored well, Cherry's first yeah. try, I think, was a bit lucky. The Warriors' ball handling was horrendous, and that was before the rain set in. And then they leaked a few tries late. They had a couple of big, big names in this one. And I think, look, the, the, the Titans are obviously going no good, and the loss of Campbell doesn't help them. But I love the fact that he hasn't balked and just chucked AJ back there. Not saying that I love Philip. Sami at, at playing fullback, but AJ has to be the six. We've seen how good he is at six in those couple of occasions. I'm giving them um, a big chance we'll to cause an upset. To, we'll here. get to your flair in a minute. <laughs> Jeez, I think you blokes are overthinking it this week. There's just teams, when teams are significantly better than the other, just go with the team that's significantly better. But Dan, you've never done a tough, long off season. It's brutal. The teams don't lose forever. You mentioned the two in a row for the Gold Coast, both those wins 13 plus. So they'll believe they can win this. Manly on the road have won three of their last 12. Dez, four and versus the old firm. Close last week, a bit of confidence up. This is cherry ripe for their first win of the year. Love wow. it. Cherry ripe. Wow. <laughs> Look at the teams. Cherry ripe. Manly's going to kill them. No pun intended. This is a proper Tom Trebojevic goes berserk. That could easily Game. be true. Could easily right. be true. Where you want to be on. I mean, you've got Harley Smith Shields, right, in his 18th game, don't overthink it, Dan. He's played. He's played. He's played a lot in the centres. He's played a lot on the wing. He's in the centres now. Do you not think this Tolu Kola could not flourish? I mean, these. Do you not think Jason Saab could go berserk in a game? All that these, may be these, true. These are all. These are all absolute yeah. possibilities. But thank you. It's all relative to the price that you can eat up. Yep. And for my flair. Uh, speaking about just I've got bad news for you. Because our best bets are going to be a uh, part of this and you're going to be riding on with me at some point. But anyway, go for your flair. Yeah, please. keeping it very simple here. I would usually go ultra flair and go 13 plus when I'm getting around the dog. But we're just going to keep it simple. Titans to get off the mark. Shuggy said it perfectly. They're just going to get their season uh, off the mark here. Quick single for the yep. Titans. Okay, here's a question. If you had only $50 and you had no access to adding more funds to your account. You could only bet on our best bet trio, which I'm going to tell you is going to involve Manly, or that head-to-head, -head, where are you putting your 50? I think my, um, I've been pretty clear for what the last few got, years. What hey, to, put it, to, put on the record, to put it on the record, I was going to have a best bet related to the Titans, but it was in conflict with what you had already submitted. So I put the team first. Did I submit last? And allowed you. Didn't no, I, I did. Submit no, last? I did. But I... And I allowed you to have your manly play, which we'll get to later. I, I think it's I'll change. I think it's fine for us to sometimes con conflict. This is this is give me warriors with the start. I don't I don't care. I'll, you do you do what you want. No, 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 warriors no, with no. the start. No, no. Let's just let's not muck up with the regular Brisbane guys. versus Canberra is our Saturday night game. Uh, Broncos. Only giving, up, only giving up seven and a half? What's wrong with you people this week? Leaning heavily towards the favourites this week. Yeah, no, no. And, and that's yeah. what... You know, they're the weeks I go very badly. Reynolds and Haas are still out. Canberra, they, they were not very good last week, but they won. Well done. Well done to them. And rolling on. No Rapida, no Whitehead, no Horsburgh. And they did win this game last year, Joel, very famously. And later in the year, it was pretty tight. Brisbane got away at the end. But Canberra, for whatever reason, matches up and has matched up really well with the Broncos. Yeah, their pack is going really well, the Canberra Raiders. Papa Lee. Papa Lee is in tremendous form. Tarpany Young. I love Mariotta. Morgan Smithies is flying. Uh, Trey Mooney off the bench. All over. They're going really, really good. So um, they have won four of the last six against the Brisbane Broncos, including that game, yeah. ironically, in April last year. Who was the 5-8 for Canberra that day? Do you remember? <laughs> Uh, down there. Yeah, no, no, the Broncos game. Was that Suncorp? Was also at Suncorp. I called that win. game. It got them back in contention. They'd been battling. Big outsiders. No idea. I don't know. Elliot Whitehead. It's some weird... Brad Schneider. Oh, is that right? Brad Schneider was So before he went to Hull? Correct. Wow. Correct. Oh, good um, They did that last year against Haas, against Reno. Uh, ask me that question again. Against Herbie Flegler. <laughs> no, ask me that question again. Who's the Canberra? Trevor Shadell. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, 
Fleckler, Herbie, all those guys were there at Suncorp Stadium and they come up with a famous win. Yep. Seven and a half to me feels just a little bit too big. There has been a lot baked into this price here for how the Raiders just scraped over the line. The, the, the amount of ball that they had, you play that game again, they're winning handsomely. You, can't, you don't always score the tries that you should. And on the flip side, the Broncos have been getting very, very lucky. Not just last week, but for the majority of the year. And I'm gonna, we're going to do a deep dive into that for, in the Fox League edition of the show. But no Haas is huge. Big edge in the pack. Massive edge. Yeah. They, this is coming from the Raider hater, who has been put to bed because I, I was off them at the start of the year. But you can't just, and this is why I'm, I'm not being stuck up and arrogant, Dan. I, I have changed my tune mm. significantly on them. It's taken you years. They've been a pretty successful team for years. No. It's taking you all this time to actually pay them respect. No, no, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing finally from okay. them. And there isn't a, a player in that squad oh, now versus the top eight. that's having a bad start to the year. They're We're all playing game well. Game from this bloke. Fogarty's going great. Fogarty's never played better. Uh, all Ethan right. Strange is playing like a bloke that's played oh. 100 games. Oh, Joel. I've just got a sneak preview to the flair. Go on. Sell this. The Sell this flare. to me like it's Sydney real estate. Okay, the flair is... <laughs> Let me find it first. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. This is a very bad start. Okay, no, the flare, the flare. No, no, no. The flare. It's, you've lost your This lost is Flair minute. Central. 13 plus, Canberra. Oh, love it. Sugar. 13 plus. Love it. That's got my profile written all over yeah. it. That's excellent. Go for the jugular. You're overthinking this week, Dan. Canberra, Canberra. Yeah, no, better team. No, no, this one I'm not as confident. This one, I promise you, Brisbane, Canberra, I'll, I'll go with you. Canterbury, Newcastle, Sunday, 2 p.m. Uh, they might have found something, the dogs. Connor Tracy, very busy at the back. Stephen Crichton in the centres. Not going to move. Not going to move. I worry about the dogs here. Uh, Sam Hughes, I think, is going to be a very good prop. I've said that on the show in the past, but the men up front don't have big minutes in them. Hughes, Patolo, Farmacilli versus the Saifidi boys and Leo Thompson. Is he playing, Hughes? Is yeah. he playing? He's been, hasn't he been given a... Release at some stage to go to the Cowboys. Nah, nah. not what, him. What? He's too good. Well, who, we who was the three-way? Um, that was. Kajewski goes to the Broncos. Edwards, Harrison Edwards. Yes, Harrison. Harrison. Edwards. Edwards. Okay. If they let him go, there'll, sorry. Be, a, there'll be a protest. Yeah, he's okay, old. sorry. And he's, yeah, a Harrison Canterbury, Edwards. he's a Canterbury junior too. Gotcha. My feeling, Joel, is I think, and this is a very good even matchup, but I think Newcastle's forwards might bash him up a bit here. Yeah, I, I don't really know. Like the health of Ponga is the key here. Um, their right-hand side, 14 tries they've conceded the Bulldogs compared to next to nothing. So if you're a Newcastle player and you're running the ball and you look up, you see Kickow, Burton, Sherry and Fox, you're on the wrong side, right? You've got to go to the other side because you're just not scoring on their left-hand side. Bradman Best scored a hat-trick last year, which put him into the state side. Mm. And I think you'll find he scored four or five games in a row or six tries from his last four games. So he's starting to run into a bit of form. But I... Tough game. I don't Look, know. Crichton, Crichton right centre now, I think, just to add a bit of starch to it. Yeah. And I think, like, the, their left edge attack is humming at the moment. Yeah. And what well, Kikau's, if he keeps playing like he does, um, with the big, big moments he has in games, and they win six more games, there's a chance that he wins the bloody Dally M. Yep. That's, how, that's how good he's going. I've, I'm sticking up for the Bulldogs here, and you have got a lot of upside with the health of Kalen Ponga. Um, he can't be 100% and there's even a chance he doesn't even play the game. And we saw the yin and yang of Newcastle when he wasn't right, that the back end of that first half, they were nowhere. I've noticed the price has gone out for the dogs and in for the night. So the, when I looked on Monday and to today, Wednesday, does that suggest money's gone for the night, Sean, or does that suggest there's more confidence that Ponga will play? Uh, I, I don't actually know. I'm, okay. I'm not too sure. Um, the, the, the Bulldogs' results probably don't look that good. I know they leaked a lot of points to the Roosters two weeks ago. That was that chaos footy they were playing. Yep. They also scored 26 in the first half in sideways rain. The, their attack's actually going okay. I think they're going to get a very big crowd for this game. I, I hope so. Canterbury fans have been waiting for a moment to come out of the woodwork. I to, hope so. Even though they're two and four... They would have been so proud what they delivered. Oh, this is a 20th. I can't wait for this game. Uh, I'm, this is a radio game. And uh, at it's not often, Joel, I look forward to going to Homebush. I'm looking forward to this because I think they're going to I think they're gonna Before, get, a, get, get a big atmosphere. There. Just on their forwards. And it has the, the, um, 
not misconception, but going into the start of the year, everyone's concern was about how their full pack was going to be dominated. They're actually coming fifth in play, like attacking play the balls. They are getting pretty good field position. Their attack first couple of games left to be a, a fair bit to be desired, but it's just starting to click. Mm. Even last week, though, you got to admit they had a lot of chances. Yeah, but you got to respect Melbourne Storm. In you Melbourne do, as well. but they're a, a very good halfback away from being a proper upper echelon Are team. Are you putting six on legs in there? Oh, look, to be fair, I don't know if it makes a huge difference. Hutchison's playing well for what he does, but he's not necessarily a creative player. Yeah. But Tra Tracy point. at the back is what everyone has been asking for, and I saw enough in that game last week yeah. to know that's the, that's the team. All right, woo time. Now, woo! I, I, disclaimer, I have no idea about this game. Absolutely none. That's why I'm looking forward to it so much. Adam Elliott scored three tries in six games. Those odds have stood out. $7.25 against his nice. old club. He's getting a lot of minutes. Yep. I just think that's big odds. Big, too big. Yeah, I like it. And he follows through on kicks. I, 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 was, gonna, I was looking at Kai Pierce-Paul. Well, he hasn't scored yet, and he's a big offloading machine. So I, I want to see him score before I start putting faith in him. Cronulla versus North Queensland, our Sunday match of the day, 4 p.m. Sharks slight, only slight, only slight favourites. Wow, two and a half is the line as we go to print. Uh, four and one, the Sharks. Hamlin Weller is back in, first time this year. They're two and zero at Shark Park. Cowboys, and no Talungi, so Semi Valame is in. Uh, by the way, Sam Stone Street playing for Cronulla, so they've lost uh, Katoa. Cowboys, God, they're a funny team. They've conceded twenty in five straight games, 20-plus, but they still have the number one attack. I have zero faith in them, Sean Omrod. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. The, the, the defence leaves uh, yeah, plenty to be desired. You look at their last four games, this is on the road. Uh, round one uh, against the Dolphins, 61 points in the game. There was 70 against the Dragons, 50 against the Bronx. And last week against Parramatta, there was 47. Just ticked the overs, but they left a lot of points on the field as well, the Cowboys. So the only angle I can really find here, I'm not super convinced about the Sharkies, um, how they're going now. That didn't convince me against the Bunnies. That should, probably should have been a, a lap up. So you look to, for points. And we'll get to my little flair later on. Okay. They've only won six of their last 17 on the road. And every time they've won all those six, they led at half time. So they've either turned up or they haven't. Whoever you like, Sharks or Cowboys, take the half full double. Um, Teague Wilton is the play for me. I think he'll find Chad. Okay. Ooh, tries around Chad. Yep. Cronulla have won a, a nine of their last ten against the Cowboys. E even when Cronulla's not great and the Cowboys are better, Cronulla have matched up well against them. Dollar sixty nine is disrespectful to Cronulla. They should be a dollar fifty for this game. Two oh five half full. Prefer that. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes, I would. Very strong. Shark Park Saturday Sunday after. I I've called a lot of the Cowboys this year. No, they're they're not yet. Not yet. I, mm. I, they're they're having big. Dark patches against bad teams. Cronulla could run it up. Cronulla could score 24 points in 20 minutes, and that's the end of the game. Who's got the flair? Uh, I do, and I'm thinking down that path. you just got to look to the over total points. But we're going a bit fruity. It is a flair. So there's a total match points bands market, 61 plus, which has clicked in two of the four away games this year for the Cowboys. It's just got, it had a little haircut yesterday, oh uh, but it's still $5.75. The total has been 42 up to 44 and a half. So I'm a little bit annoyed I didn't jump on the feed early and just snap that up. I hope the weather's nice. Have we looked at the four? Well, no, weather's okay. Very Track good. Good weather, fine. Excellent. Sunday Arvo, Shark Park, it just, it's got all the hallmarks. Well, that's a fun out. bet because we're cheering for points. Yes. We're cheering for points. That's good. All right, best bets time. <laughs> I like they've put Sean last here. Like, that's the this big is, drum roll. <laughs> uh, for me, sorry, boys. Manly, nine and a half. Uh, giving up. Uh, I'm just taking him. Better team. Significantly better team. I know Gold Coast are much better last week. I know they've sort of found something with uh, AJ. I mean, that... How did it take Des Hasler that long to go AJ Brimson into the halves? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's negligent. Um but Manly's significantly better, and I think Tom Trebojevic is going to go absolutely berserk. Joel? Raiders plus seven and a half. Just big pack, powering through. Too many question marks around the Broncos at the moment, and they have had some things go their way, Shawnee. Mm. Plus seven and a half, and you're getting dollar ninety-eight. And you know what that means? Not only is the man... The man who is going to break the streak soon is the anchor. Oh, yes. Sean Sunday, what time? Is this 4 p.m. or 2 p.m.? My game. Uh, 
2 p.m. Sunday, 2 p.m. Accor Stadium. This this gets me. Run this us gets me. Your process. What was your shortlist? So we had we had uh, we had Dragon circled. Yep. We had West circled. Yeah. Can't trust them. We had Titan circled. Can't trust them. Theme appearing here, Dan. If you haven't worked out, Raiders circled as well. Probably could trust them, but Broncos burnt me last week. So we just go back to the absolute obvious. Sean was first to pick, so he had the full board. That's to right. Work with. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bulldogs. Head Whoa. to head. Keep it very simple. A lot of upside. I make them favourites in this game, even with Ponga playing. Yeah. Not significant favourites, but they are favourites. You've got a lot of upside in KP's hip. Not Good, luck. Good luck. Young Good luck. We need you back. Yeah, we need you back. We need the old Sean back. I don't need I don't need We need barrel chested Sean. Yeah. We don't need slumped there, in his there, chair. There is Shaun. a saying about something about form is temporary down. Class, Class is permanent. permanent. Yeah. Is, that how it, is that how it finishes? Well, Career. form is getting less temporary by the week. That's all I would still have to say. Still <laughs> still now, three. not one, not two, but three Bambies right now. <laughs> They're all uh, Masters related because that's all I've been obsessed with for the last week is the Masters is my favourite sporting event, so I watched every minute. Um, and we start with a, a player I've always liked... Uh, Jason Day, right? Now, this is how he used to dress, right? That's when he won the PGA. Very, you'd say, athletic, You're wearing the typical polo. Dressed like a golfer. Dressed like, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, there's a little bit of style about him. There's another shot here where, you know, he's pumping the fists there. But again, typical polo, a little sort of added our stripes across. But there's nothing outlandish about that. I don't know what's happened, right? He's never been sort of in the Adam Scott world of style master, but always a pretty conservative, pretty nice dresser. Then something has happened here. Let's just take a look. This was day one. The very baggy pants at Augusta. They're wet weather pants. Right. But he kept them on, I believe, even when the rain stopped, right? So he was happy to sort of keep that on as a fashion statement. But you might do what Sean did. For, that's a forgive run. Yeah. Wet weather. <laughs> Nothing to forgive about what he produced on Friday. Oh, a vest a's. where someone described awful. very accurately, his vest looks like a 1960s packet of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Melbourne, is yeah. dressed by a mob called Melbourne. It is such a fashion <laughs> statement or an attempted fashion statement. There was a great rumour going around that the people at Augusta asked him to take the vest off. Oh, no. Now, I think he took it off because it was hot. Yeah. And, and it was, it, that was for the morning session. But I just love the idea. Because Augusta can do that. Just yeah. excuse me, sir. Mm. Please remove that. Um, my, well, that's, that's the Bambi. But I'm suggesting Jason Day is not dressing himself. Someone's got involved here. Mm. Either his wife, his kids. He's hired some stylist. And then no, making... I'm telling you what it is. It's Moolah. Yeah, but he can get Moolah anywhere. What I'm saying is, I mean, some he, he's still got to tick off on that vest and go, yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> I think someone's got him by the cruets emotionally the where, cruets. He, where he can't say no. I bit... wouldn't be shocked if his kids liked it and he sort of he knows it looks like garbage. Is it a bit puffy shirt-esque off song? Oh, he is it? he's committed to it, so he he's, just has to roll yeah, out yeah, a puffy that's shirt. That's exactly right. And... That's one. Number two is another Australian, Greg Norman. Right. Now, it was oh. the quote here. He goes to Augusta as he, he, he can't even get a pass, right? So he has to pay his way in, and that's fine. But the quote at the bottom here for those watching is, is the one. Firstly, he declared the boss is here. But what about this Trumpian-style quote? There's been hundreds of people, even security guys, stopping me saying, hey, what you're doing is fantastic. That's live. Is there anyone that actually believes that quote? No. Nah. No. Nah. There are hundreds of people, even security guys, saying what you're doing is fantastic. Cap. Complete cap. Mm. But that's, you know what, if you, this is what the lessons we've learned over the last few years. You speak lies into existence enough times, people will believe it. Uh, or at least uh, his constituents. So that's one, two. Now we get to the difficult one. <laughs> the difficult one. <laughs> because this man has been the athlete of our generation, and that's Tiger Woods. Now, if he wants to go to Augusta and barely make the cut with his broken body and then battle his way to last, 
that's totally on him. He has earned the right to do what he wants. If he wants to pull up stumps, if he wants to keep going, if he wants to be a ceremonial golfer, that's great. But here's my issue. We all get the broadcast, Fox, Sky Sport, everyone from CBS. A lot of us have got money on this event. What we don't need to see in round three is every shot of Tiger battling his way to an 82, okay? And now that, now that is a more rap shot, what we're seeing there, a frustrated Tiger. Firstly, I don't want to see a champion fading, okay? We have things called featured groups and, and other avenues now. If you want to watch every shot of Tiger, there's ways to do it. But please, enough. I don't, if I want to see bad golf on a Sunday morning, I'll go down to Moore Park, okay? <laughs> and play myself, okay? I don't, I am sick and tired of having to watch um, bad golfers. And unfortunately, he, he, his body had failed him and it was bad golf. Play 60 shots. While, while, while blokes I'm invested in, invested in <laughs> Ludwig, I don't see him. Yeah. Please, enough. <laughs> nah, Ludwig. Ludwig, he could find a camera. Oh, Ludwig. He's so, a good-looking so, boy, Ludwig. So is Tiger done for top tens in the majors? Never bet him top ten again. Done. Yeah. The, the problem is he picks the courses. He only wants to play the big tournaments. Understand, he's bro his body's broken. Yeah. He can't walk. No. But he's picking – he only wants to play majors, which are the longest courses, which are the hilliest courses, and where the tee times do not suit him, Right. Because Masters, he can't play in the cold, right? Because no. his back is stuffed. He needs warmth. <laughs> so when he's asked to play at 8 in the morning, it's chilly, right? And he can't activate the glutes or whatever it is he has to do. Uh... Vern Lundquist was going to be part of a quadru... Vern Lundquist stole a bit of commentary, right? The commentator that was just given all sorts of um, farewell love, and deservedly, his second greatest call, yes, sir, stolen from a commentator 20 minutes earlier. There we go. I got Vern Lundquist. Oh. Uh, yeah, Ben Wright, 1986 oh. Masters. Poor look old it up. Vern. Yeah. A legend, legend, that. a legend. <laughs> but whenever it's brought up, never acknowledges, oh, yeah, no, my second most famous call, and someone actually said it 20 minutes earlier. <laughs> That's it. We're done. Don't forget Fox League Thursday night. It'll be a much more professional affair on Thursday. What you've heard today is a lot mm -hmm. of jibber, but uh, hopefully entertaining jibber. Remember, faux celebrities, please let us know. We want, we want you to be part of the show. <laughs> well, we're faux celebrities. Uh, I'm saying people on our I'm level. not a celebrity. Get me out of here. Uh, get us out of here, Dan. You have... A big audience every Friday, Thursday and Friday night on Channel 9. Don't tell me you're not a celebrity. We're done? We're done. Uh, see you on Thursday <laughs> night. Goodbye. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.